Everybody, this is an awesome day. Road to Kona. I am with Tim O'Donnell. He just validated. He punched his ticket. He, he will be racing in Kona in October. Tim, so great to see you. Welcome to Road to Kona. Oh, thanks, Mark. Um, obviously, always love chatting with you. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. Uh, crazy, crazy, you know, year, year and a half for me. So uh, to to get back, I'm 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 excited. Well, let's let, let me back up. I mean, in 2019, as most of you probably know, Tim got second place. He went sub eight hours. The only guy in the day who was better than him was Jan Frodeno. I guess he's not much of a slouch. I guess that's not, that's no dishonor to get second to a guy like Jan. So you had this incredible race in Kona 2019. Obviously, we have not had another Ironman World Championship in Kona since 2019. October is going to be the next one. You had a journey, though, that was a very uh, a, a road that probably most of us would rather not go down. And but then you have come back. You just did uh, Des Moines and you validated. You got a slot. You validated. You finished your first Ironman since 2019. Take us through that that high, the low and then coming back up. How's that been? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. Uh, <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. And, uh, and it even started before that Kona in 19, you know, I broke my foot it was six or seven weeks before the race. Didn't think I was going to start, ended up having, uh, you know, performance of a lifetime for me, uh, on the big Island. And I was just so excited, you know, finishing second, um, just was like, okay, let's roll. You know, this is, this, we're going to really build off this. You know, I was 39 at the time and I'm like, you know, Hey, doesn't matter. You know, you're racing better than, than ever. Like, so I was really excited. And then obviously 2020 rolled around with the pandemic and everything got, got shelved. And then in uh, March of um, 2021 in, in Miami, in a, a race in Miami, uh, I suffered a heart attack on the bike, mm. somehow finished the race, uh, which I don't advise doing. Uh, please don't do that if you have s signs and symptoms of a heart attack while you're racing. Mm. Uh, but went to the, went to the hospital, uh, had a stent put in, uh, had a soft plaque rupture. Uh, over 80 plus percent blockage of my LED at the top of my LED, uh, pretty serious stuff. So, you know, very, very lucky and grateful to be here. Uh, at the time, my, uh, my son Finn was only eight weeks old. So it was, you know, it was, it was kind of a tough pill to swallow when you're, you know, in the, you know, facing, you know, uh, you know, questioning mortality at that point in your life with the, the young child. So, uh, but you know, last year was just all about rebuilding. I didn't know if I was going to be able to race. I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back. Um, you know, whenever you suffer a heart, heart attack, there's all, you know, they, they'll clear the block and they put a stent in, open up the artery, but there's, uh, almost always uh, damage to your heart tissue as well. So you have to work through that on your way back. And, uh, thankfully everything was really minimal in terms of kind of the, um, the damage done. So, I uh, just decided, hey, you know what? I still love racing. The doctors have given me the okay. And, you know, let's see what I can do. Let's see if I can get back to Kona and, um, you know, hit that start line again. And you, and you uh, punched that slot in, in Des Moines. Well, it wasn't pretty, Mark. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, was, it, was do, it was looking pretty darn good until uh, the last little bit on the run there where things yeah. Sort of just yeah, the down. wheels fell off. Um, you know, I was almost coming off the couch in January. I kind of, I got a, you know, approval to to get back to normal training kind of late in 2020. But at that point, we had been, you know, having trouble with um, finding, you know, good help um, for our kids, you know, with uh, childcare. Mm -hmm. And Rennie was coming back to racing, so I was more in support mode for Rennie as she was trying to get back since I couldn't race. So uh, I really wasn't until the beginning of this year that I got into a, a real training rhythm. So. Uh, I wasn't surprised that, you know, a couple months later, I wasn't quite fit enough to uh, perform the way I, I would like to uh, for 140.6 miles. But I, had, I, I got about 127.6 of the 140.6 <laughs> right. So I got to figure out the last 13. <laughs> well, that's not bad for just a few months of, of real serious training. Yeah. Did, did you have any inkling, any sign looking back now, after, you know, after this this period? that anything was going on inside you? I did. Um, and actually at the end of 2020, I had uh, gone to see cardiologists here in Boulder and I'd run stress tests and calcium scans. And uh, there wasn't anything glaring at them at the time, uh, particularly with my level of um, fitness. And so we kind of just kind of kept trudging forward. And to be honest too, 
there was a lot, you know, with everything going on with the pandemic, there was, you know, okay, is this like a long COVID, um, you know, symptoms and, or is it just a lot of anxiety um, from, you know, our worlds being turned upside down, you know, as professional athletes, our career, you know, careers basically just got, you know, put on hold right away. You know, we couldn't, obviously couldn't race and make a living in that regard. So uh, obviously stressful time for everybody. So there was all these other factors kind of masking what was really going on. And mm -hmm. even when I went and even when I was in the emergency room in, in um, Miami, the cardiologist did not think I was having a heart attack. Uh, he's like, well, we're going to go in. Um, we're going to go inside your heart and we're going to look around and see. Um, but the way that you are right now, I don't, I think, you know, I, this couldn't be a heart attack. And then he got in there and he's like, oh crap, <laughs> this is, he's like, whew. Uh, and he was, he was in there in a lot longer. He's like, we'll be in there a couple minutes. And then, you know, 30 minutes later or whatever, he's still poking around in my heart. Uh, so I knew, I knew something was going on then. Wow. Well, you know, this is men's health, men's health week. And, um, you know, I'm going to generalize here. Generally, it seems like women are pretty proactive when things are just feeling off, you know, they, 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 they want to figure out what's going on. I know something's not right. They, they, look into it, try to address it, try to correct it, try to change it. Guys often, you know, they need a near-death experience before they go, hmm, yeah, maybe man. I should go see somebody about this. <laughs> so um, uh, hope maybe you can help other guys benefit from those subtle signs that you were feeling so that if they start to feel something like that, they might go, wait a minute, this is not just a I'd better get this looked at at a, at a much deeper level. What what were some of those things that caused you to actually go in prior to actually having that heart attack? Yeah, I mean, that's it's a great, great point, Mark. And I think it's a silver lining in all this that now I'm here to and able to talk about this and, you know, talk about you with this and share, share the story with others. Um, number one, know your family history. I did not. And a lot of heart disease... Um, uh, issues are uh, genetic. So, you know, in hindsight, I did look back and there's, there's a long list of uh, cardiovascular disease um, in my family. Should have known um, that would have been something to kind of clue you off. Remember that doesn't matter how fit you are, you cannot fitness your genes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, remember that you're not invincible. I think a lot of us as endurance athletes, we're so fit, we train so much, we're so mentally strong, that we get through a lot of, you know, we, we can, we can deal with a lot of stuff that maybe is more serious than, than we want to think it is. And then, um, you know, pay attention to chest pains. Um, if you feel like someone's sitting on your chest or, you know, tightness in your chest, spreading, uh, pain from the center of your chest outwards, uh, shooting pain down your left arm, uh, your jaw locking up, particularly your left side are all, uh, signs that you might be having issues with your heart and please go get it checked out. Um, you know, I have a little thing, a little cardia, um, it's called cardio mobile, I think. And I can just do like little ECGs on the spot on my phone. Um, so I've definitely learned a lot and, um, you know, I'm glad I'm here to help, help educate others. And I've had so much feedback, Mark, of people reaching out, uh, either sharing their stories, which has been incredibly, uh, empowering to me as well, knowing that I have so many, you know, uh, other athletes and non-athletes, um, you know, that have that have gone through what I've gone through, but also people that have prevented um, serious issues because of my story. So, uh, you know, I'm humbled that I can, that I can be out here and, and, and helping raise awareness. Mm, that's great. And I know you're doing some work with Inside Tracker, which is, uh, for those of you who ha don't know about it yet, it's, uh, they do blood draw, and then they analyze your blood for pretty much anything that could be going wrong inside your body. And they also do a DNA, they, they have a DNA test where they can look at things and say, okay, you actually have a sort of a, a DNA propensity to whatever, have certain issues. So just keep a look out for those things. And I, I'm assuming that this has been something that you've really, uh, you've really suggested people look into. Absolutely. Find, find those weak links and, and strengthen yep. them. Yep. And it's, it's not only about, you know, finding getting the knowledge but then action plans afterwards right and that's what i've you know i started working with inside tracker this year and largely in part not just for athletic performance which is obviously important but um just for my personal health and well-being and being able to identify particular inflammation markers that can mm -hmm. wreak havoc on the body and the heart 
um, that's huge. And like you said, with DNA testing, if you can identify, um, you know, potential problems, identify, you know, issues that are going inside your body with your blood work, and then have actionable items to help you improve them. I mean, that's huge. Hmm. What an advantage. Yeah, we live in we live in an amazing time. Let's fast forward a little bit into uh, the present time and what's going on and hopefully look at October. The pandemic uh, seemed to really provide a lot of time for other athletes who were not dealing with stuff to actually train pretty darn hard consistently, not race. And then suddenly now it's it's become apparent that if you're going to win an Ironman as, as a man, you're you're got to go under eight hours. You know, look at uh, like Ironman Brazil, top three guys under eight hours. Des Moines, top two guys under eight hours. Cairns, top two guys under eight hours. How do you think this is going to translate in Kona when you have this mass, this pool of talent and, and fitness and everybody going at it all together in one place? What's your crystal ball I mean, look like? Yeah, uh, I think Kona this year is going to be something special. When, you know, with the pandemic, I feel like this this younger crop of of athletes, they just really like they grabbed the reins and you know or hit the throttle and went like full in and they came out, um, they just exploded. You know, like their you know the performances are insane. Uh, I think breaking eight hours in Kona, you know, it only happened the first time in 2018, right? So two Konas ago, so you had two guys in 18, two guys in 19, break eight hours. That's the only time it's ever happened, and I think. I wouldn't be surprised, heck, if the top eight or top 10 guys are under eight hours mm -hmm. are right in Kona. Um, and now it's looking like, yeah, hey, you know, you better be running under 240 if you want to win or even get on the podium. And you're going to have to do that off the front of the race, right? You're not going to be running through the field. You better be able to swim fast and ride with that front group. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be a challenge, that's for sure. Yeah, I think with, with shoe technology, with... Um... Yeah. With technology in terms of just pure nutrition, the ability to, to get in calories quicker than you could 10, 15, 20 years ago, I think a lot of the improvement is, is because of that. It's, we weren't limited by fitness. We were limited by our ability to keep gas going in the tank. And that seems yeah. to have changed a lot. I think you're right, Mark. And like I even look at my power numbers on the bike. It's not like they've changed tremendously over the years, but I've gotten much more efficient on the bike my positioning, my actual trek speed concepts a lot faster. And then, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, the way I, I put out my power, the way I actually execute my races is more consistent and better. Uh, my variability is much less. So I, I feel like, yeah, we had this shift where like, okay, everybody figured out how to get faster on the bike. And then, you know, shoot tech, technology and everybody got more efficient running and got faster. And then now, like you said, that final next piece is that nutrition. And, and when you nail that, that's, yeah, when you can... Mm -hmm really run fast at the end of an Ironman. There's one last question I, I just really was, I, I've been wanting to ask you for a while now, especially since you had the heart attack. There's probably three points in your, in your career where you, you had an idea of something you wanted to do. Uh, you had a goal, you had a vision, you had something that sparked you, that got you into the sport, that meant something to put in this training. So Kind of what was your what was your motivation when you first started doing triathlon? What was it in 2019? Had it changed at that point? And now what what would define a day of success for Tim O'Donnell in Kona in October? I think I'll go way back early in my career, collegiate nationals like 2000, this has been 2000, 2001. My sophomore year of college, I had no idea about triathlon. And I was just a swimmer. I was on the swim team at the Naval Academy. I dropped my chain um at collegiate nationals got on still still finished okay and and i think i finished 11th and i'm like man i would half-ass this like if i really do this right i think i can i think i can <laughs> you know I, I think i can be okay so i think that was my first catalyst for iron man my first catalyst 100 was watching rinny uh in 2009 mm -hmm. and um, i think you know we talk about this you saw me uh the next day i was running on the treadmill at the gym um going up, uh, it was a Polani, right? And yeah, and you, you and were, you look, yeah, it was just, you, you had this focus and I'm like, I've never talked to this guy before, but he's got a, He's got what it takes <laughs> to crush this race. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I remember that, uh, it was so cool. And then, you know, I went and won uh, IQ Long Course Worlds like two weeks later uh, after that kind of inspiration. So that really drove me Long Course. Um, and then 2019, it was all about, 
just finding a new, you know, as your career evolves, you have to find new motivations, right? Mm -hmm. Like things change, you know, when you're young, you just want to win a race, then you want to make money. And then you, or you want to win world titles and you have all these motivations. And I just wanted to, to test myself and find like, I don't know, be a good example for my kids or just Izzy at the time. And just, hmm. I don't know, find like that almost happiness and joy in the sport again, which I really did, you know, breaking my foot. I didn't know I was going to race. And I was kind of burnt out almost on, on Kona. And then hmm. I realized like when I, when I realized I might not be able to race, I'm like, Oh man, I I don't want to miss this race. Like I want to be there. So it gave me that gratitude. Mm. Uh, and you know kind of joy back in, in in racing particularly Conan I think that was huge and moving forward it's oh, man Mark uh, it's it's all different now you know my perspective has completely changed this is all gravy um, I probably shouldn't still like you know some people say I shouldn't be here on earth <laughs> right now right like mm. I'm lucky to be here let alone to still be racing uh, I, I'm not going to take that for granted I'm just going to go uh, I'm going to prepare like I do normally for a world championship. I'm going to prepare to win a world title. Um, and that's where I'm going to find my, my, um, I don't know, my, my happiness and my, uh, you know, my joy just from, from that, that journey, you know, I'm going to really enjoy the journey up to this last or this next buildup. Mm. Those are, those are words of wisdom, everybody. I, to enjoy the journey, to have gratitude that you can actually go out there and race. And sometimes, that can get lost uh, in the, the pursuit of a, a goal or, you know, a, a result or, or a time. But I think, you know, COVID taught a lot of us that we love the sport. We love, yeah. we love the journey and we love how we feel when we just go for it and see what we can do. Yeah. And that doesn't just apply to the pros, right. Or, you know, if you're trying to win the race, but you know, all of us, not even in triathlon, you know, we get caught up in kind of the minutia around, you know, what we really love and sometimes yeah. we lose sight. So whenever you get the chance to refocus, hopefully it's not a, you know, a life-threatening wake-up call, but uh, getting the chance to refocus is, is always important. Mm, wow. Well, I personally am so happy you're still here with us, that we can chat, that you are still on this path. You're, and you'll be in Kona in October. Your kids will be there. Rennie's going to be there. Yeah. And you're going to have a lot of fans cheering you on. So good luck for the upcoming training. And we'll see you in Kona. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Can't wait. All right. Road to Kona, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Tim's story. Feel free to reach out to him, uh, especially if you have questions about heart issues. I know he's trying to help as many people as he can. And uh, that makes him a priceless human being on this planet. Great to see you, Tim. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark.